Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to the Fitness Show. I've got Mrs. Poopy Pants herself, <laughs> Melissa Stefano, with me again. Hello. Everybody loves your diarrhea story. Oh my gosh. I, it wasn't my diarrhea though. But somebody yeah. else pooped in your pants story. <laughs> they have sinned my pants. They have sinned your pants. Yes. You had your pants sinned upon. I did And you know what? I'm really thankful that you brought me back because I really thought that after the last podcast that you would never, oh, no. ever let me step foot in your office again. So apparently my audience is quite juvenile because, boy, are they so happy with the, the diarrhea story well, or the, what, what I suppose it was a diarrhea poop, story. Poop. Poop. It's yeah. always funny whether you're in fourth grade or you're in your 40s. It is. Well, I mean, my five-year-old, my seven-year-old think that farts are hysterical. Hysterical. See, so, this is the thing. My kids aren't allowed to say that's the F word. Oh. Yeah. They, they pooted? They they make smells. They pass gas. <laughs> they make smells. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're, we're not tacky <laughs> like you folks. Yeah, we, we're a little bit redneck. We don't let other people <laughs> poop in our pants and things oh, like that oh, either. Because I asked for that to happen. By the way, so funny, this weekend at um, the triathlon that I did, when I um, I had to use the restroom, empty my bladder before the empty race that started, bladder. and um, there was a whole row of porta potties, but then there was a building like on the other side that happened to be open, and I'm like, I wonder if there's a bathroom in that building, just so that I don't have to go use a porta potty. You're gonna have another story. Oh, did I, so I don't know if I told you, but I once had porta potty poisoning. What is that? What is that? Yikes! So it was. Two years ago at the Disney Dark Side Star Wars race. I was there. And yeah, I actually, I think I was scheduled to do all three races, a 5K, 10K, half marathon. And um, what I had decided was because I had to travel so much after that weekend that I would bail on the half marathon and leave right after the 10K. Okay. Because I was coaching my kids' soccer team and I just didn't want to have to miss another game. So I came in, I did the 5K, 10K, left immediately after the 10K. And so um, I at 5.30 the next morning, which is gun time for the Disney half marathons, I wake up in my bed at home, thank God, with my stomach feeling kind of funny. And uh, I'm thinking, that's weird. But if I was in Disney World at the start line with my mm. tummy feeling funny, I would have still shown up and my put my, my number on and I would have started running, right? So this is me at 5.30. Oh, that feels weird. At about 5.55, Fitz explodes. Oh. I've got the stomach thing. And it's awful. And all I can imagine is, thank God I bailed on that race. Oh, yeah. That would have been awful. Because, yeah, because I would have been on the side of the road in a little sparkle skirt, <laughs> either throwing up or pooping in my pants. That would have been... Like, what do you do? You, you can't. What do you do? There's You're nothing. out on the side of Osceola Parkway. Yeah. There's it, nothing you can do. Oh, that's oh, awful. So, but this is how I got... So how do you know that you were poisoned by the porta Well, because it was a temporary thing, and um, I shared food with people. So everything I had eaten for the past 24 hours, other people ate. And they were fine. They were fine. So I believe... Did you that, sit on a porta potty I did not sit. But you know... you know you're not supposed to do that. No. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. I yeah, do That the was hover. a PSA to everyone. You do not sit on a porta potty squat. It's a good way to exercise. My, my, my butt and quads can handle the, <laughs> the, the squatty hold. Anyway, the... Squat, <laughs> squatty the, potty. The, the squatty potty. <laughs> where you just hover. The hover. The, the hover. hover. Yeah. I'm the <laughs> hover around. But anyway, <laughs> I think it was just on my hands because you open the door yeah. and then you leave and then you only have the magic soap, the antibacterial yeah. soap. And so I believe it was porta potty poisoning. Hmm. That's really gross. That's really gross. Yeah. You got E. coli. I think so. Yeah. And I just, can you imagine being on the side of the road no. in the sparkly skirt, like vomiting everywhere and possibly worse? I'm sure that there are other people who have done that same thing, but no, I don't, I would never want that to be you or me. Yeah. And all I can imagine is all of my, my, my fun fitness running people over there, 
There's Fitz. <laughs> let me let me Snapchat that there real quick. There she is. It's <laughs> a selfie. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Poor that potty. was the year that we um did the banana phone with Johnny that year. Yes. Yeah. I'm surprised I did not pass the E. coli on to you. I appreciate you You're keeping that to yourself. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, when I realized I was like, wait a minute, I didn't share food with it. No, I did share food. It wasn't my food. It was that porta potty. Aww. No, but you know what I love? I actually am so excited by the porta potties that are fancy now. Do you ever go into one of those the big... The trailer <gasps> ones? They're or, so well, nice. Not, uh, those are great, but even lesser step than that, just the, um, the what are we calling them, the disabled, the wheelchair accessible oh, they're ones? They're massive. Rider. They are, yeah. I was in one, but, well, there was a big line, you know, the lines that line up to the yeah, porta potties, yeah. and I just so happened to get that one, oh, and I was yeah. like, wow, I can like... You're like almost, a princess of the porta potty. Yeah, nice. It was nice. How how I mean, how low are yeah. our standards of the world when we're excited yeah, to get into the big? This porta potty rocks. I won the porta potty lottery. Yay! Yay! All right. So can we stop talking about poop? We Please. probably should. Yeah, I mean, this that would be two so, poopy porta cup porta pot. That two would be two in a row. Podcasts in a row. I know we're gonna get fired, or someone's gonna call the FCC and complain <laughs> in some regard. So, um, moving on, you had a triathlon this week. I did. I did. I was. Um, it was my first relay triathlon. I've done triathlon before, but I've never done a relay. This is a smart way to do it because you only got to do one leg. I know one discipline instead of three. Why didn't I think about that before? And it's, and it was a smallish triathlon. It was an Olympic was, distance triathlon. They had a sprint. There and was a couple. Olympic hundred people it wasn't thousands right um right yeah I think the, yeah it wasn't okay. ginormical no okay yeah it was um the Jacksonville triathlon group the hammerhead triathlon group they okay. put on what they call the hot triathlon um, at Camp Blanding which is a naval base or yes is it Navy and were there um, sailors running around no oh, I do I'm dig sorry. the sailors but the lake um, where the swim takes place is gorgeous it's Kingsley Lake and um, if you've never seen it, the lake is perfectly round. It looks like it would be a man-made lake. And if you look at it from when they, they've taken a picture from the sky, it looks like a meteor hit the ground Boom. and it made this huge circle. But it's a natural lake. It was Perfect. naturally perfectly round. And um, it's beautiful. You can see the ground the entire way. Um, it, it was beautiful. It was a little warm, warmer than I would have liked. It was yeah. It was hot tubby lake water. And um, the swim was great. It was really so. It was three. There were three of us. We called ourselves the Wonder Women. You, and, Rebecca, uh -huh, and Levon. And Levon. Yep. And Rebecca did great on the bike. Levon did fantastic on the run. And um, the swim was was good. We were one of the first heats or waves to go. Um, and there weren't so many people in the wave that we were in. So there was one other wave before us, and that was all the men doing the Olympic distance. And then about ten minutes later, they had. All of the relay and the military and a couple of other all clumped into the same wave. And we all went. And before, you're looking at the buoys. So I'm looking at this huge lake and there's um, two orange buoys. And then way out, which seems like the middle of the lake, there's this little tiny green buoy. And everyone was debating, you know, where, where are we swimming to? And I'm like, I'm sure it's just that second orange buoy. And then around, mm -hmm. no, it's that green buoy. So what is that distance? It was um, a mile, right about a mile. How many... It's at yards. How many yards is a mile? Do you remember? Uh, 19, right about 1900, 1890 okay. something. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I said, all right, to the green buoy and then to the other green buoy and back. And I'm like, oh, okay, because I've only been in the water three times since to train for this race. And uh, what's nice, though, is that I could go all out on the swim. You know, I could give it everything I had because I didn't have to ride my bike after or run. So it was like, you know what, I'm just going to give it all I have. And we're halfway to driving to Camp Blanding, halfway there, and I realized I forgot my inhaler. Ah. Well, you can't use it in the water anyway. No, but I could use it six minutes before yeah. <laughs> I get into the water. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> so about halfway through the swim, I'm dizzy, and I oh. see three buoys instead of one. And I'm like, okay, pick one, Melissa, because you got to go to one. And yeah, I'm trying yeah. to like shake my The one my in the middle. Up. I did the one in the middle, and I wound up in the middle of the lake. So I went for the wrong one that I saw. But... Um, so I had to swim a few extra hundred of yards to get back to the But you didn't hit buoy. a tree. No, no, I didn't hit a tree. When I escorted <laughs> Melissa on a, a thing, I was your guide and you hit a tree. I did. Because you can't hear him yelling, Melissa, yeah, don't be. hit the tree. Don't do it. <laughs> nope, there were no tree obstacles in this. Good, no like alligators. All, nope, probably too warm for them maybe. I mean, it was the, the water was hot, 89 degrees. That sounds That's wonderful. That's hot for a race. Uh, 
And um, so I gave it all I had, and I was, for the relay, was the first out of the water, and uh, nice. which was crazy considering I wound up in the middle and couldn't see. Sure. But I'm coming out of the water, and I, I, somebody took a picture of me coming out of the water, and I look like I am seeing three of everything, and Aww. I can't breathe. And um, so I run over to the transition area where the girl is ready on, where Rebecca is ready for her bike, on her bike, and uh, I'm like, can you just take the thing off my leg? So she takes the timing chip off my leg, puts it on her leg. And she takes off, and we know she's going to be gone for right about an hour. And we're ready, cheering everybody on as the sprint people are riding back in and heading back out on the run. And Rebecca comes in right on time. We're tied still for first place wow. at this point because a few of the people who were behind me on the swim caught up to her on the bike. Sure. And then Levon heads out on the run, and it was hot by that point. It was hot outside. Yeah. And well, she's an Iron Man, like ten times over. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah she's amazing. Uh, but we wound up in fourth place, which is still not bad at overall. all. Overall, congratulations! In the, in the That's yeah. incredible. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was hot, but it was a lot of fun. It was a good time. Wow! Well, yeah. And when will you do another one? I'm not signed up for any more triathlons. Hmm. Not this year. I mean, there are more that I could do. There, absolutely, but not that I'm signed up for them. I'm ready though. If anybody needs a swimmer, I'm good. Let's do it. Yeah, I maybe I'll be the swimmer. I just did swimming laps yesterday. Oh, fantastic. Again. You know what my fear is? It's not even a fear. My deterrent is my hair. So it goes up in a cap. They have cap for Yeah, but hair. it doesn't keep and it's not the um it's not that it gets all over the place, it's that it gets so wet and my mm -hmm. hair takes forever to dry. Okay. It's such a whiny bratty <laughs> it thing is. to yeah. complain about. It but is. I did. I went swimming yesterday <laughs> and I did um I guess I did a thousand yards. I okay. thought it was two thousand because I I had the distances. Someone told me the wrong distance oh, of the pool. They're twenty five yards. Yard. Yep. Yeah, but um, but it was I and I got out of the pool thinking, well, I could do more. I was just bored. Oh, you, you know? can get the um the headphone for your. I need ear, to do that. You hear it through the jaw. Do you like that? No, you it goes listen? in your ear. Yes, but I thought the music came through your jaw. No, well, that I don't know. I don't that yeah, I don't I think, know. Yeah. Anyways, but I just love the swim itself, so I don't need the. Yeah, yeah, I, I got, enjoy it. I got bored, but I could have done. I probably could have stayed in the pool for four hours more and kept swimming. But maybe you need someone um, to swim with so that you essentially. Well, have, we can't chat. No, you can't chat. No, unless you're kicking. But no, you can't chat while you swim. But at least you have that competitive aspect of it. All right, we're gonna do five hundred. Ready? Go. I guess. Yeah. What time are you there? Um, like eleven thirty. Mm -hmm. And then I got out of the pool after I was done, and then I read some People magazine. Nice. Perfect. Well, you know what? It was an, It's a beautiful day. I wish it would stay 95 degrees here all year round. You're crazy. It is Ugh. too flipping hot no, outside. No, it's not. It it's, is this is so why we're gross. here. Oh. This is why we're here. How can you be a Floridian and complain about the heat? I was, well, this is why we're here. Specifically, you show up in Florida because it's... Can it be 85 high. degrees? No. This because it it's 90. just it's too hot. The, everybody's melting. The people no. are melting. So here's the deal. I show up at the pool and I know this is probably the water that you think, oh, oh it's so yeah, hot. It's gross. And no, me, I'm thinking, ah, it's so cold. So I couldn't dive in. I went over to the beach entry and oh tippy toed my in. Gosh. Ugh. Don't you hate it when the water hits your tummy and it's cold? So it, it's not uh, it's not that cold. It's cold. All right. So I was it's about to get in the cold. water the other day at, at the gym. And um, there was an elderly woman. She was probably in her 80s. And she was had her little kickboard, and she's kicking yes. back and forth. And the aerobics, the water aerobics are going, so they're, like, yes. moving all the lanes over. And so there's barely any lanes to lap swim in. But the older woman who's kicking in, she's like, dear, I love your bathing suit. Where did you get it? And <laughs> it was, like, it was a triathlon suit. So I had said, well, this is, a you know, a triathlon suit, but you can get one with the – she's like, does that keep you warmer? Because this water is freezing. And I'm thinking – that water is usually like amniotic fluid. Like it's gross and hot. That's because and everybody's nasty. peeing in that pool. Yeah. Thank you. Now I really it's now true. I just want to go for a swim. I know. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I go to jump in to do my laps, and I'm thinking, this water is not cold. That poor woman, because she's so little, she probably had just nothing to keep her mm -hmm. and at all insulated and uh, mm -hmm. adorable, like you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how you're gonna be when you're 89 years old. I'm already am that Excuse person. Me, dear. Don't I, don't step in too fast. I used to train a guy locally back when I did personal training, Jody Davis, who you probably know. I do. And so Jody's house is about 5,000 square feet. And then his pool, he has an indoor pool, and the pool room is 2,000 square feet. And so I'd go train him, and he, he had a lot of weight to lose at the time. But I'd get in the pool, and they, they could heat it. I think it was about 500 bucks a month to heat the Ugh. pool. 
But he liked it cold, and I hated it cold. So when I get when I got in, this is how horrible I am. I would purposely scream like horribly uh, loud, so he'd feel guilty and turn the heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposed when when I swim competitively, the pool's always cold. Like you swim faster when it's cold. Oh, I just wakes you up. I just hate to be the first. Well, I actually I love to be the first person in the pool, just because you get the pool to yourself. It's like a glass top. I just I love. So, the first one so this was my obstacle yesterday, and I'm not like you don't have the tri suit. I just wear my bikini, but I don't have. Um, it's not the basic triangle top. They're they're a little bit sporty ish, mm -hmm. but my boobs kept pushing up out of the, you know, yeah. it was like over the top of the swimsuit. Literally, so uh, kind of yeah, the top, yeah, yeah. And so I'm swimming, and then I and I'm trying to adjust. You know, you're grabbing your suit to pull it up. But then there's maybe six people at the pool. I'm on the farthest lane, and then I just feel like screw it because nobody, nobody's who's watching who's me anyway. Me. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody got a little peek, peep show, la ti da, free, free show, free show. So I'm gonna have to reevaluate the um, swimsuit I can, choice. I can help you with that, or just wear a sports bra underneath it. Oh well, you're wearing a two piece, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I wear a sports bra options. underneath my tri suit. So. Or I can just be one of the freaky girls at the pool. You already are yeah. one of the freaky girls at the pool. <laughs> it's like that girl thing. And then, and then the, um, the shower area is not so bad. So here's, this is the takeaway, other than us mindlessly meandering, is swimming's an incredible workout, and people think, oh, but I'm not sweating and so forth. When I was kickboxing, um, I had dropped down to about uh, 113, 114 pounds, which is really light on me. I'm five, five and a half. So I had torn my hamstring and could no longer, I couldn't even walk for exercise. Mm -hmm. It was bad. And so I put the leg buoys on. The only choice I had for cardio exercise was swimming. And so I put the buoy between my legs and I actually got a snorkel because oh, I didn't know the skill mm -hmm. of, the, of the, breathing. the breathing. So I just got the snorkel and mask. I'm a great snorkeler. And I would swim for half an hour, an hour. I dropped down to 110 pounds. Wow. Just from swimming. It's a great exercise. Yeah. It's like you build your shoulder muscles. Like there's no tomorrow. I mean, I could just totally feel it in my shoulders when I... It's that pull. It's the pull. Like absolutely, in the water. and that's absolutely. I think the problem with a with a lot of people are who aren't confident in their swim. They don't. They think that your legs are what's going to propel you, and it's no, really it's, speed it's your, with your arms. arms. It's but it's pull. it's a tremendous workout. It's a huge calorie burn. So if you're someone who de who uh, denies that or diminishes it, swimming is a great workout. You're not feeling the uh, the traditional effects of a hard cardio workout because you're cool in the water but trust me if you swim consistently you burn a ton of calories if you're not good at the breathing thing get yourself a snorkel and I would use it not only at my neighborhood my apartment complex pool I was back in college but then I went to Gainesville Health and Fitness a at lot our of gym I, I, and it was great it you have full oxygen, uh, full access to oxygen, not oxygen. That's different. That's a totally different thing. I made up, and I'll teach you guys about that later. But yeah, so it's a really good way to do it. And then if you have an injury, you know, if you have a lower body injury and you're not in a cask and you're a cast, what is going on I, with the words? It's I, solar eclipse. So here's the thing: I could totally stop this and edit it and say like, let's say those words over. But I'm just gonna let it go. It's gonna happen again, so you may as well just so let it go. So if you're not let in a go. cast or anything, I feel like we're in Frozen right now. Right. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> leg buoys Do are you basically. You want to build a snowman? <laughs> stop saying. <laughs> um, but leg buoys are really just two pieces of foam noodle mm -hmm. with a strap between, and you throw them between your ankles or your knees. And then you or just both. swim with your upper body. Mm -hmm. They also sell them like in the shape of a, um, where it's one piece and it kind of comes down in a curve and sure. you stick that between your, yep. your thighs or your ankles. Either or, you can, I mean, if you put them through your ankles, it's a little bit of a more core workout because right. you have to hold your upper body up. Um, and you can put one if you're really new and you really can't figure out how to keep your butt up. And that's how I taught my kids to swim when they, because uh, they kept trying like to a swim. Like they underneath were, you? No, no. Okay, so when my kids were learning how to swim, they'd be kicking, but their legs would slowly start to go under the right. water, so they were more like water running right. and then using their arms. So I would say, butt up, butt up, butt up, until like, you got to keep your butt up, sure. and as you keep your butt up, you're working a lot of your core. So take one of the buoys, and if you put the buoy, just one buoy between your ankles, you still have to work your core to yeah. keep your butt up. Um, but if you have a hard time keeping your butt up, because some people just don't float, they have no butt fat to float, then you put one between your ankles and one between your thighs. And then that way, that's all up, especially sure. someone with an injury. 
and then you work on your pull. Absolutely. And the other option, especially if you're one of the girls who don't want to get your hair wet, <laughs> you could just get a kickboard, and which yep. is a foam board, like a mini, mini boogie board, and then you you use your legs only. So yep. if you go do laps, or if you go to a pool, there's a tons of options. You could do water running. You could walk back and forth. You could get... Um, hand tools, something to... Pull ups on the side of the pool. Well, yeah, you could use Tricep make a things. barrier between your fingers so you could actually do resistance training, upper body. You can just go to the deep end and tread water. Literally try and tread for 30 seconds at a time. Take a 30-second break, tread the water. You can swim laps with freestyle or backstroke or breaststroke. breaststroke or you can just do lower body. Use the kickboard, hold on to it with your hands, do a few laps with the kickboard, and then do a few with the leg buoys and just do your upper body. So if you fear the pool because you don't know what to do or you really don't know how to swim, there's a ton of options for you. And again, it really is a fantastic calorie burn. And um, look at swimmer bodies. You know, they have to pair their workouts with quality eating habits, but they've got pretty fantastic bodies. Shoulder, shoulders. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh. Pe people ask me a lot at races. I'll get people come up behind me and say, are you a triathlete? <laughs> <laughs> which I, I, or are you a swimmer? And it's because I have big, broad, you know, you muscular back. Shoulders, yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're actually kickboxer shoulders <laughs> or um, weightlifting shoulders. But the pool is fantastic. And believe it or not, my hair dried. Really? Yeah, huh. it dried. Crazy so, thing happens. Just naturally, it just dries, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Huh. It did. It, it wasn't as big of a burden as I remember. And, and you know, they do have swim caps that are supposed to keep your hair completely dry. Like I, a new kind of swim cap. If, I would try that out. I'd be happy to. That would I'll be... send you the link to one and you can let me know if it works. Cause yeah. I, I, I also have so much hair. You do have so much You know, hair. I would need one that looked, um, I think it's a Jamaican thing. You know, they have the, uh, the fuzzy hats that are bags. You know, they just hang as, the little... <laughs> blob above yes. your head. They have a swim cap though that has an extra spot for <gasps> like a bun back here now. Nice. Yeah. yeah. They're, it's come a long way. I like So here's something that's totally inappropriate. Okay, let's do it. Well, is, that's what we do. <laughs> so I we were talking about chafing, someone and I, a man and I, and you know people chafe in their armpits and stuff, but guys have um, boy parts. <laughs> yes, yes, they and do. So, they do have boys so, have boy parts. Right. Huh. So, wow. <laughs> so this was my idea. I said, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed, but I'm not. You're so blushing. anyways, totally I was blushing. saying with the undies, wouldn't it be great if they had undies where you could slide your junk into and then they would just stay in place because apparently the boy parts move around and do some chafing. It's hmm. uncomfortable to be a man running. Well, like the boobages. I mean, you can have that yeah. issue if you don't have a good sports bra on. So you're if you, get some... Yeah, so if you get a sports bra with pockets that hold your boobs apart. Mm -hmm. So if you get underpants that have a special slot and you put your junk in, your junk What if you go commando? Stay stationary. No, because you're a guy and you don't want your stuff flopping all over the place. That's the problem. Well, couldn't it just be no, like a... Shh, shh. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. But I'm they, trying to invent something. But he told me he thought they had them. Oh. Yeah, that there's underpants for man mander pants where you slide your junk in and it stays in place because think about it why all, are they called mander pants i just I, made that okay up. all right i'm just i was thinking huh that's, man that's fits talk okay all right so i have words but so we have all these bra things and we're trying to control the boobs how many i mean how many sports bra conversations have we had oh i think every time we talk yeah. we have a sports bra and then there's online the ladies are like what sports bra do i wear like, and oh all, yeah big boobs talk to melissa she totally knows which ones so to which guys are online saying, I need some proper mander pants. My junk, my <laughs> junk is not staying in place. I need some wonder what, what women, some women pants. Yeah, what? Cause Cause lady they, pants. They, they've got chafing. We don't have that. I mean, I don't think so. I don't have, I don't, I don't have coochie chafing if that's what you're <laughs> no, asking. No, no, So anyways, guys, here's the deal. I don't know the name of the mander pants, but <laughs> it sounds like a clever idea because I made it up. But apparently somebody else previously made it up and executed the idea and they exist. I feel like there should be like a silicone thing that you can just to your man parts. I have no <laughs> idea what you just said. Like a silicone thing yeah, and thing. you Yeah, so that they don't they don't chafe. Like they're not gonna go anywhere. Kind of like a cup, but it just like self sticks. But just on but that, that would part. be sticky. Don't you think they'd get sweaty and complain more? I don't, I don't know the science I don't know. behind There's it. There's apparently it's just in some my head. cloth device. This has been like 30 seconds that I've learned Shove about these Shove your junk in the <laughs> <laughs> But 
but they sound highly effective. Hmm. I would say it sounds genius. So all the guys who are listening, go look for those mander pants <laughs> with with the slot for your junk. It just it's helpful. <laughs> don't you think it would be helpful? Yes. yes. It's a guy. <laughs> I don't think guys are talking about this stuff. No, because they're too busy watching and listening in on our bra conversation. I know, but don't you wish? Can you imagine? So we have the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge page. It's a group on Facebook if you're not a part. Beyond the nonsense, I teach you how to eat wisely. And every single day, I give you specific workouts to do, complemented by video instructionals. So there's no guesswork involved. You get a well-rounded strength training routine that uh, progressively gets harder throughout the month. And excellent cardio training ideas, which again, get progressively harder. And um, But there's a lot of great supportive conversation Absolutely. and people asking questions. But I never see guys go, dude, I've got this chafing thing or I can't keep the boys under control. So you have a pathetic triathlete group on Facebook yes. for that. <laughs> yes, I like that group. Love that group. So here's interesting. There's a group called um, – so Run Disney is a thing. If you're mm-hmm. not familiar with Run Disney, it's the endurance um, sports branch of Disney. And they put on races. But there's a bunch of Facebook pages dedicated to – or groups – dedicated to the Run Disney brand, people who like it. But then apparently some of them have really neurotic rules and they get... Um, Banned. Get, yeah, they, they, mm-hmm. they're mean to each other. And, and so people get kicked out a lot. We mm-hmm. don't have any of that. We have the nicest group of we human really beings do. that are supportive. And, and the only people that get kicked out are the people that... Try to sell Sell stuff. crap. And we're actually going to talk about that next. But oh, anyways, good. there's a group called Team not, or Not Team Run Disney. And they're total jerks. Mm. And and their moniker they're is bitter. Suck It Loser. No, they're wonderful. <gasps> they're fantastic. And they pick on all the people that are whiny. Nice. And it's, nice. it's awesome. I'm going to have to join that group. Yeah, yeah. So I like them. And um, here was my colossal error. So they call each other losers. And they have a hashtag called Suck It Loser. S-I, hashtag S-I-L. So here's the deal. Um, I, I'm part of some of these groups. A lot of my friends are. But I don't engage a lot. I'll hit like or whatever, but I'm a little bit of a peeping Tom, a lurker, but <laughs> um, but I like that. My friends are in there, and um, so the race I'm doing, Standing Stone Half Marathon, I'm announcing it in Pennsylvania. He gave me some codes for free, for some free race registrations, and so I went awesome. on the page, and I I said, hey, just so you know, I'm announcing this inaugural event, and the race director specifically wanted me to find some losers. <laughs> to participate. How ironic is that? So if you guys want to take part, let me know. I'll send you a code. And then I put the hashtag SIL, suck it losers, thinking I was all cool. No, 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 no. Then I was, someone was like, F you or something horrible. Ah! So I learned the only time you're allowed to use that hashtag is when you are on Disney property drinking something alcoholic. Oh. And so you have to take a picture of yourself, photo evidence that you're having alcohol on Disney. So I misused the hashtag. Did you apologize profusely at your Well, there were some sarcasm mistake. remarks and I was like, really? For the team that has is based on no rules. You sure have a lot of rules. But <laughs> anyways, it was funny. It was funny. And some of the people reached out and they're going to run the race. But where were we going? We talked about triathlon, Mander the biathlon, pants. Mander pants. Oh, yeah. and then you just mentioned the post. So as I was driving to the pool yesterday, I get a notification on Instagram that someone has tagged me in and one of those It Works Raps ads. Do they not know you at all? Clearly not paying attention because I think the people who sell them are Devil Spawn and so forth. So, instantly, so I shouldn't tell you that I started doing poof, that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, obviously the fire comes out of my hair and so forth. And I look and I think... Who is this person? And it turns out it's someone I know, someone local. Oh. Someone I know and someone I like. Not anymore. (laughs) Well, so, you know, I just physically, um, you know, there's, I I sent the original message that, hey, that said, hey, please don't ever tag me in anything like that. That stuff is absolute garbage and I don't want to be associated. And, and, And here's the deal. I was tagged in it because that helps them promote their band. Mm -hmm. People trust me, Mm -hmm. and they think, oh, I'm going to get advertisement by people who are into fitness and weight loss by tagging fits. And then I think people see dollar signs with me. There's a lot of the snake oil shakes people that said, hey, you have you heard of this product? Would you like to sell it? So, you know, with the direct marketing thing, they're going to get me on board. I'm going to sell it, and they're going to make a lot of money. Like, no way. You have... It would be hard for me to describe the millions of dollars I have turned down 
for from executives of company that wanted to hire me to spokesperson their stuff. And I, I, I care too much about the people. There's nothing I wouldn't do to protect them. So not only do I send the message that says, hey, don't ever tag me in any of that. I don't want to be associated with that garbage. It's snake oil. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whatever. So she responds and says, I'm so sorry if I offended you, blah, blah, blah. Which she's a really nice person. I like her. But then I can't let it go because not only do I have to tell, convince people that they shouldn't be suckers and buy that stuff, but now can I get a dealer off the street? You know, I'm that person. How can I get her to stop? So I say, listen, you know, this stuff, you know for a fact, because she's a fit girl. I said, you know that only exercise and eating wisely works. And every time you sell this stuff, you're being a thief. And you're a vulture preying on the hopes of people desperate to lose weight. It's evil and it's unethical. And you should look in the mirror and reevaluate if that's who you want to be. Oh, well, me and some of my friends, we just thought we'd make some extra money. I want to watch my son's graduation and so forth. They said, well, go sell the LuLaRoe leggings, sell candles, but don't take sell advantage sex toys of people. Or, for sell sake. sex toys. Yeah. Yes, people will have great enjoyment out of that. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, and so she was, she kept justifying and, but then she eventually said, well, I'm really open to new ideas and I'll consider this. So I appreciated that, but mm. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to make en enemies if it protects one person from, you know, not, it's hard enough. You've been there. I've been there. You wish you could get rid of the weight and now you have no money, you know, you've yeah. given away your hard earned money. Mm -hmm. Evil, yeah. evil. Just frustrates me. What, I don't know how people can be convinced that wrapping yourself in saran wrap would, or even like rubbing yourself with a cream or taking a pill or drinking a shake for goodness sake is going to get you fit. There's just, it's, it's appalling. You're, you're not going to get a six pack from drinking a, a shake. It's no. not going to happen. And those, that's what they, what kills me about the wraps is that, so yeah, this thing that you wrap around your body, it's going to bypass your skin, but then dissolve the fat mm. and not dissolve your arteries <laughs> and not dissolve your ligaments and not dissolve your organ. It's just so stupid. Mm -hmm. But how many people fall for it? Too many. Yeah. And so what I would like is if you are approached by someone trying to sell you this stuff, be frank and say, listen, I resent the fact that you are trying to steal from me. This stuff is 100% garbage. Yes. It's unfair. I'm working hard over here and I have high hopes and you're, you're trying to steal from me. What are your credentials? Mm -hmm. Because as far as I can see, none of the people with actual credentials would touch that stuff yeah. with a 12-foot pole. And it's not just, you know, and these are people who aren't in the medical industry at all who are trying to sell no. these things. But the other day, I, I'm in, I work in a doctor's office, and uh, a girl had come in who was overweight, and she said, you know, my friend is um, doing these drops. Have you heard of these drops? And I'm like, well, yeah, I have. I've heard of these drops. But they're usually combined with a 750-calorie diet. And, you oh, know, fun, uh, yeah. No. I, Starvation. You know, she's like, well, I think I, that's what I want. I want to do that. So we got into a very long conversation about diet and exercise, and I introduced her to the Hottie Body Fitness page the exact and the exact formula, formula for, for weight loss. loss. Yes, and I showed her all the daily workouts, and um, it, she wasn't necessarily severely overweight, but she definitely had put on a you know a good few pounds, a lot well, 20, 30 pounds, 40, 50 pounds, okay. probably. Um, and she was like, you know what, I'm just going to do these drops and, and eat way less. And I'm like, well, okay, so let's just say you did these drops and you ate 750 calories. What do you think is going to happen as soon as you don't eat 750 calories? It, you can't sustain that for the rest of uh -huh. your life. So why not do something that may take you a little longer to lose the weight, but it's a forever weight loss. And yeah, and it doesn't even take longer because people can't maintain the 750 calories right. long enough to lose 50 pounds. They can maintain the 750 to lose 4 pounds, and then they lose their mind and go back to their horrible eating habits. And maybe habits. even 15 pounds. But she's like, well, if I just got down those 15 pounds, then I would be motivated to do more. No. Uh, why don't we just no, do it right from up. the get-go? Yeah. yeah, I just... Ugh. It's all around frustrating. I think we're just a society of, I want it to happen right now. Quick now, fix. now, now. Yeah, because yeah. I can do everything right now. I can look at Google and find the answer to that right now. I yeah. can find out the side effects of that medication right now. I can find out the status of my friend in high school's relationship status right now. Ooh. You know, but 
you can't just, not everything is right now. No, it's not. And you know what? You don't gain 50 pounds overnight. No, it takes don't. a lot of hard work, a mm -hmm. lot of reckless disregard for mm -hmm. health and, you know, nutrition and, and your weight. You really have to put in a lot of effort going overboard, drinking extra alcohol, you know, making reckless choices at a restaurant. That's deliberate. You know, it's almost like the folks, my, my kids, our kids in school, you know, my son was telling me about a kid who can't play on his volleyball team because he has a below a 2.0. Mm. Unless you've got some severe learning develop disability, that's an effort. That kid tried really hard. He made the effort not to turn in his homework. He probably didn't even turn in his classwork that he was sitting at his desk able of doing. He mm -hmm. didn't study at all. I mean, this kid made a deliberate effort to it's be like a like getting every question wrong on a test. You have yeah. to know the answers to get them all wrong. Yeah, you're, you're really trying hard. So if you're 50 pounds overweight, you've put in an absolute significant effort to gain all that weight. I know I did as a kid when I was 45 pounds extra. There was a hell of a lot of soda and beer and chips and Cheetos and wings and cookie dough. Did and, you feel like you were overweight when you oh, were? Oh, yeah, I did. did. Yeah, of course I did. Even... You know, we could go back, if you ever listen to episode one, if you want to know about my weight mm -hmm. loss, go back to episode one. But I did. I was so uncomfortable in my, in my skin. My, I remember looking down and grabbing my waistline, just grabbing the roll of fat, thinking, oh, I wish this would go away. Or I would grab my hips and I would, you know, fill up my hands with the roll of fat on my hips and think, I hate you. I wish you would go. And, you know, thank goodness for you know, my interest in this field and then research and learning the right way to do things mm -hmm. that I was able to finally get it off and keep it off. But Did you ever feel insecure with your body? Always. Yeah. Always. Always. Good, yeah. good to know. Good and, to know that you're human too. Oh my gosh. No, I was, it, it, and it started off when I was talking to my son because it's interesting. He's five foot eight. He's gorgeous and he's, he's he got a, a super guy. fit little body, but he's self-conscious. He won't take off his shirt at the beach or the pool. Yeah, Aww. yeah, and um, so I said, Parker, I, I was there. I said, but I was there with a, a older sister who every single day, a hundred times a day, said you're fat, fat, and you suck at soccer. So even when I was a eight year old string bean, and I really was that eight year old string bean, I we'd go to the beach. I'd have my one piece swim, swimsuit, and then I'd have a men's large T shirt over it. Between you know uh, eight and fifteen, I always had this gigantic T shirt on, and then. I started buying all of my clothes extra large. I thought if they're, if I wear this loose baggy look, people won't see how overweight I am or they won't see my fat or they won't see the flaws. So then I started dressing really dumpy and it was interesting because, you know, even my sister who would say, you're so fat and gross, when I would wear, she worked at Express mm. and so I would have her buy me large shorts, large shirts, things that just hung off of me. But then she'd say, you look stupid. Those things are garbage bags on you. And in my mind, I was thinking, you've been telling me how fat I am. Hmm. Of course I'm hiding it all, you know, so. But I did the same thing. My grandmother, and, and this was at me at 110 pounds or 120 pounds, and she would tell me I was fat. And I was a swimmer. I was a competitive swimmer, and I was always told that I was fat. So I did the same thing. Like I would be at the beach with my best friend, Heather, and we, she would have on her two piece and her amazing tan. Cause you know, at the time she put baby oil on right, her tan. Right, right. That's what we all and, did. <laughs> uh, and I would go to the beach in my two piece, but with my dad's shirt on top of me. So and crazy. Uh, Here's the other thing though. When I was 15, 16, I became kind of that girl desperate for attention. So then I started dr dressing kind of skimpy, mm. you know, with the, remember the cutoff shorts that had that weird um, cotton pattern sticking out underneath them, like the Daisy Dukes with cloth underneath them. I do remember that. I never wore them, but oh, yes. I, I wore them. And then I used to have these shirts. They were basically kind of like bras, but not. And and it was weird. I went from covering it all up to trying to look. Uh, from one I don't, extreme to the other. It was awful. We've talked I mean, about I me just, not wearing shorts, right? So I, I never did that. But you wear shorts now. I do wear shorts now. Me and tank tops now. You should have some denim cutoff shorts. You should have some jorts, baby. Jorts. <laughs> I'm getting you some jorts. Some Daisy Dukes. Uh-huh. A little white mm. tank top. I think you look huh. hot. Huh. Huh, let's go do that. <laughs> uh, maybe tomorrow. Or the I'm washing my hair. I'm yeah. in another country. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's interesting. And the things I, I'm in pretty good shape now. I think I can I feel good about the, the shape um, you, that I'm in. You're hot. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. But I wouldn't wear the stuff that I wore when I was sixteen. 
You know, I could probably get away with wearing a half shirt, but I'd feel real like a cheesy, stupid idiot doing it. Uh, well, okay. Well, now you're old. Thank so you. That <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. So old people like us, I'm going to categorize myself uh, as um, an elderly. We're, we're just grown-ups. We, grown-ups. Okay. You get grown up. Yeah. All mature. Right. More mature than I was right, then. Right. I, yeah. Mm -mm. It, I don't think it's. Okay, so if you were at a morning mile program, right, and another mom was there with her with her children, and they were running, and she was in like a half shirt and her little jorts yeah. running with her kids, no, you no. would be like, um, "Can you dress your but age, please?" Yeah, I also think seventeen year olds in half shirts look stupid too. Well, I I agree, but then again, I've never been a half naked dresser myself, so I mean, I'm so I so wish I wasn't. I look back and I think, what was I thinking? We actually, my girlfriend Christy and I, Christy was. Um, she was lean, she was in good shape, but we would go buy those spandex tank top dresses, remember, in the yeah. 80s? That yeah, I was, remember them, but yeah, yeah. I remember. So, we had those, and we'd wear them with pumps, and we'd take our <laughs> fake IDs and go out. <gasps> nice. And cruise around nice. Fort Lauderdale. Like, just, mm. we were catastrophes. We were so cata... Ca Ugh. So, so anyway. anyway. Think of the memories and the things that you learned about yourself. I mean, yeah. There are things you can't ever That's take right. away from you. It made, made you who you are. Thank goodness we were out looking skanky on a one <laughs> That was, that was, Beachwood Avenue. Oh my lord, <laughs> so bad. So so yeah, I do re I do remember what it's like to feel absolutely horrible about myself, and and that's part of the deal now is convincing people that yes, there's a lot of hard work that goes into getting to your ideal weight. But what's really hard is living in that body you hate because that was hard. Every every time I put on any piece of clothing, I hated going into any store. I hated it. And all I thought about was how miserable I was in my body, how much I hated my hips and my thighs and my everything. And now that I'm fit and I've been an ideal weight for 20-something years, I, um, I don't think about my body anymore. I never think about my hips. My hips, I think about making them stronger so they don't hurt when I'm running. But I don't think about my tummy. I never grab my tummy and look. I don't, I just ignore it, you know. Life is so much easier. Don't you, 82 pounds less you are. Okay, so I How had a feeling you were going to turn this around. But yeah. the problem is for me, and I think I've talked about this on the Hottie Body Fitness page, that I still feel like the fat kid. And I, I'm more comfortable well, looking at myself naked in the mirror because I feel like that's that's the, the point. But when where you put you on your be. tank top that you're wearing today, did you think, oh, no, I didn't and think... And you would uh, have 80 pounds ago. I'm you thinking thought, that I, yep. it's been a while since I've done an arm workout and I probably should do that because I don't want to lose um, my my deltoid muscle that I just discovered. Yes, but um, <laughs> Thank you. But I still... Uh, and we've talked about this a lot. Uh, Tim Powell and I have talked about this and, and Michael Jones mm -hmm. and I have talked about this. That buying... And who just... Somebody just did this. Was it uh, Stacy? That... Stacy Nyman. Mm -hmm. Getting yeah. to that smaller size and then buying that smaller size. And, yeah. and so this was the first time I've done a race where I ordered a small shirt. And it's always been, it's been a large before that and then a medium. And the mediums are swimming on me. And so, uh, but there's something in my mind about putting Since down I a small. Do, yeah. yeah, I can't fit in a small. No. And I still feel like, the in my mind, the fat kid and... It's that point where you just have to feel comfortable looking at yourself naked in the mirror. Not the number on the scale, mm -hmm. but we're all so critical of ourselves that it's got to be and, and you. It's, I imagine it's for most of us, we'll still always be the fat kid inside. However, the daily burdens that come along with being yeah, disappear. Yes. You know, we'll still have that mind thing. So here's interesting. My daughter, wears the same, we wear the same jeans, literally the same exact size jeans. And um, she's my massage therapist the other day. It was really cute. I see her every Tuesday, and she sees my daughter sometimes. And so she had just seen Ginger two weeks ago, and then I got on her bed, and she goes, that is so weird. She said, from the hips to the neck, you and Ginger are like clones. Aww. And so what's interesting to me, which is really cute, and, and I say this, and I, I mean it from the, from the bottom of my heart, that... If I could be anyone in the world, I'd be Ginger because she's mm. the happiest, most delightful, wholesome, sweet, loving person alive. There's not a mean bone in her body, and I just, ugh, she's less cranky. Is it from? Those? Yes, right. Oh, yeah, good, she's good. she's just perfection, and um, uh, it, she blows me away. But anyway, I look at her. So we're we're technically the same size. I have bigger boobs. I have broader shoulders, but um, other than that. You know, I look at her jeans and I look at her and I think she's so tiny. She really is so tiny. And then I think, 
it's preposterous because I'm twice as big as she is. In my head, I literally think, especially my legs, I think, oh my gosh, I'm twice as big as she is. How do I fit into those jeans? But the jeans fit me perfect. So how will I ever That's wrap my head. head around that? I, I, I really have no, what's the word, um, true ability to, uh, to gauge what I, what I look like or, you know, my size, my, just like you are. I pick up my own jeans and I think, I'll never fit into those. Why did I buy those? This is stupid. Why did I pick up this size? And then they fit and I'm confused. It's, it's all in our heads. Our heads yeah. play funny tricks on us. Yeah. However, these are the better, this is the better side of it than being way bigger than you wish to be. Absolutely. Every day you've got the burden that you're, oh my gosh, you're not fitting into the pants you once did. Mm -hmm. You once did. And so if you want to have the problems, the new problems that Melissa and Tim and, you know, Paul, all of us are having that, you know, oh my God, we're smaller. This feels weird wearing the smaller side. That's a way better problem to have than holy crap. I don't fit into my scrub pants anymore, which are like pajamas anyway, but the yeah. thighs are tight. That's, yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, so if you want to have new awesome problems, exact <laughs> formula for weight loss and folks, you got to stick with it. You can't just kind of half-ass it if you want to get all the results. So if you're taking part in the Hottie Body Fitness Challenge, I know which one of you are doing it all the way. Because you're the ones who get on Facebook once a week and say, hey, I lost three pounds or I lost one pound or whatever. And if you're someone who's been um, at a sticking point and you haven't lost two pounds in two months, you've been failing yourself. And so you can keep failing yourself and you can keep half-assing it. Or you can throw your whole ass <laughs> into the exact formula for weight loss and count your darn calories and stick to your budget and, and have these new problems where you can't fathom how you finally found yourself in a smaller shirt and smaller pants. Mm, true. It's yeah. nice, right? It is. It's a good, it's a horrible, you know what, I think I need to get another job because I need to buy new clothes, but... Um, sorry, I, not sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go raid your closet. <laughs> yes, and, uh, you could. Absolutely. <laughs> that is crazy to me. That is an insane concept to oh, me. Oh, we should put you in Fitz clothes. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. But it is. It's a, um, it is a good problem to have. Yeah, the burdens. That I needed to buy new underwear because I couldn't fit into my, my underwears were too big. Saggy drawers. Yeah. Totally different than mander pants. Mander pants. <laughs> mander pants. It's a thing. Mander pants. Mander pants. All right, so that's it. All right. I'm Fantastic. done. This was fun. Thank you and for thank being you for, a guest again. Oh, thank you for having me back after the poopy conversation we had. Yeah, well, people seem to like it. Uh, crazy We've bunch. got... A, uh, um, my better class of losers, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, it's, yeah, hey, like attracts like. So Yeah, yeah. We got mm -hmm. friends in low places, and they, they get it. They get us, <laughs> and we get them. So thank you, Miss Melissa. Where can everybody find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Running Working Mom or, as always, on the Hottie Body Fitness page. That's right. Join us. And I am at Fitness on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel where you can work out with me, you can see some of my celebrity interviews, and most importantly, visit MorningMile.com. Help me get more kids moving in the morning. It is the most uh, successful school running program in the entire nation. It's mine, and I want every school in America to have it before I die, so I could use your help. Go visit MorningMile.com. Learn a little more about it. Share it with your friends and uh, do your part. Thanks, everybody. Get to work. Get to work. Bye. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to gift the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, Morning Milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The Morning Mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting MorningMile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's MorningMile.com. Long may you run.